Hello and welcome back to my Factorial 1.0 tutorial series. I'm Exterminator and thank you for joining me again here guys. And uh, we last left off I think with the intention here to uh, do some oil production. And uh, I've collected some materials to start that process. So first thing on our agenda is going to be to make some pump jacks. So pump jacks are what you use to uh, collect oil. This is very much like real life. Uh, instead of miners. So we place these on oil wells and they will give us some oil, which obviously is a liquid. Um, oil wells work a bit different. So as I was mentioning last episode, uh, oil wells are actually in a percentage and rather than hard numbers. So if we look at an ore patch here, we can see this is a hard number, 737,000, uh, whereas oil is in percentages. Uh, however, this does translate basically to uh, hard numbers once you actually start pumping it out. Uh, and it's different from mining in the fact that the percentage actually increases the uh, output, the consistent output of it, uh, whereas miners just have a set amount. So that may sound a little complicated, maybe it didn't make sense. It'll make sense when we do it, but for example, uh, a miner has a mining speed of 0.5. Uh, th these electric miners, so you can see their mining speed is 0.5. Uh, and then uh, resources have like a you know a hardness for which they mine, but basically um, this this will just mine at the same speed, about a, about a second here uh, for this, and a couple seconds maybe, and it will just always be that. It does not matter what the uh, richness of the ore patches it doesn't you know until it actually completely runs out then obviously it stops um, but this will mine at the same exact speed no matter what the richness is uh, no matter how much is underneath it in until it's zero and uh, it'll just mine at that speed forever uh, and produce that amount per second however oil works differently uh, in the fact that it uh, produces an amount per second uh, that is more corresponding to the percentage. Uh, so a higher percentage oil yield is going to actually give you more per second uh, than a lower percent. You know, whereas again, miners just are the same no matter what. The richness just determines basically uh, how long that ore patch is going to last, not how quickly it, it allows the miner to output it. If if that makes sense. So um, I'm just collecting. We also actually while we're here, before we do the oil. While we're here, let's get a little pipe production going. Pipes are something we're going to need a lot of in this uh, oil uh, venture of ours here. So we know this is going to be stack inserters. Probably don't want to take up that space there. Uh, we can probably do it here, though, without too much worry. And uh, I think I'm actually, we are getting a little heavy on this side, but that's OK. Um, I'm going to do, again, something very much like what we've done here, because we do want to, of course, store the normal pipes as well as the underground pipes. Uh, so we're going to make our normal pipes first. Luckily, these only require iron uh, themselves, and then of course underground pipes here require normal pipes. Uh, but this should be pretty straightforward. Grab ourselves some belt. Like that, and uh, this one we can keep, I think, in the same footprint fairly safely. Uh, but the undergrounds don't need to go into anything else. Uh, and we're going to wire this up. It's Take some wire here really quick. Boom and boom. And we're going to set this, I believe, to uh, how much do we want? We, we need quite a bit. Let's say 200 above ground pipe. And then this one, uh, we can have it work if there's over 100. And I was saying earlier in the series, this is uh, a very good example of where the uh, feature of having it not work until it reaches a certain amount is really good with pipes because uh, you do need uh, above ground pipes just as much usually as underground pipes in a lot of cases, especially when you're building your actual oil uh, like refining setup. Uh, when you're running like oil from uh, you know an oil patch all the way over, it's pretty much going to be underground pipes. Uh, but for actually building your refining area, you're going to want a lot of above ground pipes because that's just how you know you're going to need them to connect things uh, in some ways whereas with inserters you know I do want some but as the game goes on we're probably not really going to be using normal inserters as much 
at all uh, compared to fast inserters, uh, whereas that doesn't really apply for pipes. So uh, this will start working once this reaches 100. Gonna be a little bit, uh, but we'll take that there. We are having a bit of an iron shortage, unfortunately. Uh, we can work on that though, because let's go check out, well, we did finish advanced electronics, which will give us uh, the ability to make these advanced circuits. Um, but you'll see that that requires plastic, which is uh, an oil subproduct. So we have to set up a whole oil refining, uh, refining uh, area before we can actually do anything with that. Uh, but as we make our way over here, uh, we're going to set up these pump jacks and I probably should have crafted some more power poles, but we're going to use these big electric power poles and these work a bit different than these. Uh, so for the medium one, it just gave us an upgraded supply area and a slightly larger wire reach down there. Wire reach being nine up from 7.5, bit of a weird reach there. Um, but this one, the supply area is actually lower it's actually really quite small. It's only four, uh, this one's even bigger. However, the wire reach is 30. Uh, so this is really nice for spanning large distances uh, for something like this. Uh, also, when you start building uh, rails, train tracks and trains, having these big electric poles running in, you know, alongside of or in the middle of your rail tracks to span power to wherever you're running your trains uh, works really, really well. So that's that's what those are for. And then of course we do get the version after that, which I mentioned being the substation, which gives uh, a decent wire reach and a very, very large supply area. Just clearing these, making sure. So the oil wells is what the oil wells look like. Little oil splotches here. And when you mouse over it, each one has a yield. So this full yield, this 2,093% is all of those separate ones combined. Uh, so, you know, 350 plus 142, 147, or 174, etc., etc., all combined together. Uh, and that's the full yield. Now, again, this is in percentages, but when we place a, just making sure we have everything here. Um, when we place a my, uh, drill over it, an oil drill, pump jack, uh, first off, it highlights all of them, which is really nice. So, this is one way we could have seen. I pretty much knew where they were and just knew trees needed to be cleaned out. But uh, much like the uh, offshore pump this will highlight every one of them uh, but when you go to place it here it will actually show their expected resources now in a per second rate and that does translate to the percentage so this is 123 percent which then just translates to a full number of 12.3 per second uh, you know this one being 129 percent will be 12.9 a second there uh, so as you can see and this one's 339.1 a second uh, because it's 391%. So the percentage um, actually influences how much per second this can pump out. You know, again, whereas mining drills don't really work that way. Um, and these will deteriorate. These will run out, start running out of resources. Uh, however, uh, unlike ore patches that will completely run out, uh, you know, as we can see, like this one, for example, uh, it used up all the resources under it, and it's it's just done. There's no, nothing under its coverage area to mine. Uh, oil wells do not. They get down to a very low point, a certain point. I will have to look on the wiki what that is. I used to know what it was, but I think they changed it. In fact, I'm almost positive they changed it not too, too long ago, and I haven't fully memorized that new number yet. Um, but it gets down to a certain minimum, and it will just then pump infinitely at that minimum. So the oil well doesn't ever go away it just slowly deteriorates and uses the oil in it to a kind of a, a bottom threshold and then it'll just pump at that bottom threshold forever um which you know is very very minimal very little uh, once it gets there but it is still something uh, so your oil wells will always be pumping something for you uh, and, and the other cool thing is later on we get, I, I mentioned briefly, we get buildings that can actually kind of uh, amplify the strength or the production of other buildings and some other uh, like, like modular modules here we can insert into things that also uh, kind of boost buildings. Uh, so that actually can go very well with oil because despite it hitting a, you know, bottom, a bottom floor, you can have it... Uh, you, you can kind of just boost that up a little bit there with these amplifying 
buildings and stuff. These these buildings are called beacons. We have not even unlocked them yet, so I'm not really going to go into their details because that is quite a ways away. Um, now what I'm doing here is I am just connecting up the best that I can all these outputs. So it shows you where it outputs, much like a miner just has one output. Uh, but of course it's a liquid, so it doesn't go onto a belt. It goes into a pipe. And uh, I'm trying my best here to minimize the... <clears throat> excuse me. I'm trying my best here to minimize the uh, amount of pipes I'm using and try not to create like loops within my system. Because uh, fluids, this is like, I could dedicate probably an entire episode just to fluids. And it would be more of a rant than anything. So I'm not, I'm not going to really go that direction. Uh, but fluids are a bit wonky in, in, in the game. Uh, they, they don't always work how you would expect them to work. And they, they kind of tend to, to slosh around a lot. Uh, unless you throw a lot of, of uh, pumps like actual like inline pumps like these pumps here into them to force it through they can kind of slosh around a lot a lot can kind of just sit in the pipes same with uh, these storage tanks which which you can just hold a lot of liquid in these they're basically like the chest for liquid um uh, a lot can kind of just I, I say a lot um it's not necessarily a lot but it, this some um, can kind of sit quote unquote at the bottom uh it doesn't really ever get sent out unless you do a lot with pumps um, so it's kind of finicky, but the point I'm making here is when you create like a lot of loops within your system and use a bunch of needless pipes, um, you're actually kind of wasting a lot of the liquid because it all just kind of sits in here a bit, some of it, and, and the more you have, the, the bigger of a problem it tends to be. Um, so that is just something to keep in mind. Uh, we are actually out of pipes here, which is a bit unfortunate, but we can at least get this part hooked up. Uh, now... You also notice I'm using a lot of underground pipes, even though they're more expensive, opposed to above ground pipes. Uh, and the reason, again, for this is to kind of help uh, prevent as much as I can those wonky fluid things, because uh, the way underground pipes work, uh, they're basically, uh, I don't want to say a teleporter, because it's not quite like that, but um, they're treated as just two pipes. Um, even though this spans this entire distance, uh, they're, basically, the liquid just enters and then boom, goes over here. Uh, so uh, we're, we're basically eliminating all this pipe in here that could cause any issue or slow it down or or, or anything like that. And then also just this is not really going to be relevant for the majority of people, but uh, it's kind of built into my play style now at this point um, for game performance reasons. Uh, these are very good because, again, it counts as two pipes. Uh, so, you know, the, the game does have to calculate all the fluids moving back and forth, all the pipe entities, etc. So having uh, two pipes stretch this distance rather than having all these above ground pipes stretching that same distance um, does help with performance. Again, until you get into a very, very large factory, uh, this will be completely irrelevant to you. Um, but that is my reasoning for using as many underground pipes as I can. Uh, plus you can walk through them or well through the through the part they you know span which is really nice you know if i were to run above ground pipe you know from from that oil patch all the way over to my base it would be quite troublesome if i ever wanted to build or venture over here because all those pipes would just be you know right right smack in the way of where i'm trying to walk or, or where i'm trying to build so we're going to run these power poles over here, just kind of to the closest thing that we can connect to, which is going to be this area up here. Um, luckily, we have a fair few of these built at this point, so I'm going to take most of them. It will take a surprising amount here to actually bring the oil over to where we want. Uh, now, we do need to decide on where we want to make our actual oil uh, refining area. And uh, this is important because... Uh, you know, initial thought, maybe we want it by the oil, but not really because um, the oil, obviously, it's only one resource. It's just crude oil. Uh, so just bringing that over is a lot better than bringing over all the products that we get from refining it. So if we build our oil refining here, we would have multiple different liquids, multiple different solid products and belts coming all the way over here instead of just one resource. Now, of course, if your oil happens to be close to your base, which a lot of times it will be, we actually got a little unlucky here with our oil. 
um, then of course by all means you can build it right by your oil wells. But in this case, uh, I think we, we need to build it by water because we do need water for a lot of the refining processes. Uh, we don't really want to block in our uh, hub, our mall here. And we also know that I'm just kind of voicing everything I'm taking into account when, when planning. So hopefully this can help you guys kind of organize your, yourselves and, and plan uh, is we've not needed oil yet. Uh, and, and we're, you know, this X distance down our bus. Uh, but we know that we're getting to a point here where we do need it. So some of these things we might want to make next on our bus, say uh, advanced circuits, for example. Uh, will need oil products and I'm getting at that because you know I, I can imagine advanced circuits will maybe be built around here somewhere uh, so I could put oil refining like way over here but we're almost backtracking at that point right is we're bringing the solid the the crude oil all the way over here refining it and then bringing those products because we haven't needed them anywhere in here yet and we're not going to um, you know it's not like the, the, these products don't suddenly require oil it's the new products that are going to uh, so then we would be taking all those and sending them all the way back down the bus uh, so to me i'm thinking we put it uh somewhere somewhere over here ish maybe it shouldn't really interfere with our mall we have room to expand the mall this way we have room to expand it down and a little bit to the right and we know that we won't need any of these refined products until probably around this area in our uh in our bus so I think having it around here is a safe bet. You know, we can run it almost straight into our, our area that's gonna need things or, or just do a short little turn and run some in and then continue it down. There's really no need to run it down the entire length of our bus from the start when nothing before this point is actually going to need it, if that makes sense. So that's just the general planning I'm doing here. Uh, now, now one thing we do need, uh, which we need to go pick up from over here, are some bricks. These things we need, these oil refineries to refine the oil, uh, are going to require stone brick. And then we also need some chemical plants. Um, so this oil is a very, um, I, I was going to say complicated. It, it is complicated. Uh, once you understand it, it's not as complicated. But even so, it's still a fairly complex, I suppose is a better term, um, a fairly complex uh, process because there's multiple stages to it uh, and, 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 and it can it can be overwhelming. So I'm gonna to try to walk you through it the best that I can. And also, I want to mention, because I know there are some veterans watching this and some intermediate uh, you know, level experienced players, uh, I want to mention mostly for you guys because you will, you will recognize that I'm not doing uh, this, but uh, I, I'm not really gonna worry too too much about ratios for this first setup at least with the oil refining itself uh, and the reason for this we're jumping just slightly ahead here but the reason for this is initially uh, you can only get one product out when you refine this initially uh, later on once we get our next science pack our blue science which we haven't unlocked yet uh, we can unlock a resource that will allow us to get three different liquid products out of refining this crude oil and that's when ratios will start coming into play because then you can do different things with those. But right now, uh, we can only get one liquid from this. And that's going to be petroleum gas, which we'll see when we do this. Um, so the ratios, to me, at this point, aren't as important. And we'll, we'll figure those out once we get the other three, the other two products, rather, for a total of three that we can do things with and, and then need ratios for that so that everything's used up. There's not huge blockages. There's not huge shortages. Um, much like production anywhere else. Uh, but this, uh, the, the nice thing about liquids, now, the, the nice thing about liquids is you can store them in a much more streamlined way, I suppose, than uh, materials. So, like, if we produce more petroleum gas from this refining process than we need to make, uh, you know, our materials, uh, it'll just simply go into a tank and sit in the tank and then be used as it needs to. And if it backs up, it'll back up and every and the refining will stop working. And there's not much harm when that's the only thing it produces. When it starts producing the other two things, that's when we have a problem because we can be at a point where, you know, it fills up on one of the three, but then that stops the refinery from working because it can't output that one. And none of the others we need will, will, will output, right? Because it's stopped. 
Uh, whereas with solid materials, we don't have that much of a problem. We don't really have a situation. Uh, well, well, we never have a situation where like something outputs multiple things. You know, we, we it's just multiple things go in, but you only get the one thing out. And also, uh, I said the liquid's more streamlined because in most cases you're not really going to be sending these into like your finished things into a box or a storage system, which is what a a, a tank here is. Uh, you're not going to be sending these into a storage system and then usually and then taking them out and then sending them to your production they're usually just going to go straight there um so all of that information i just threw at you i know it's a lot we will cover it more in depth as we go here but um the reason i mentioned that is, is that that's why i'm not going to really worry much about ratios initially because uh, the storage system is a bit more streamlined and uh with just one resource out much like um th these materials it, it it's not as important, even though it is important for solid materials, uh, because the storage system is so much more streamlined. I think I think this won't be as as big of an issue here. So, um, I'm gonna just start here. So we can place these. They're quite large buildings here. They uh, they have quite quite a large footprint. Uh, and I'm going to space these out one. I'm gonna do this for two reasons. I'm gonna start with five. This is a number I like to start with. This is a good starting point uh, to prepare for our future ratios. Uh, we know we're not we're not going to need less than five. I, I can tell you that. So uh, then we can click on it, this just like any assembling machine and select it again. Right now, the only recipe we can even do is turning uh, refining crude oil into petroleum gas. And this is the rate at which that happens. Uh, 100 crude oil goes in. It takes five seconds, and then it gives us 45 petroleum gas. Uh, so not quite a uh, you know, two to one or, or one to two there. So, uh, you know, we, we put in, we get basically ha a little less than half uh, liquid out as we put in. Um, so we're gonna do that, copy paste here, as we've been doing, and uh, control right click to copy, control left click to paste, and set all these up. And that's the only option we have. And we only have one input. Uh, later on, once we can get the recipe that gives us three outputs, we will actually also need water in one of these. Um, well, and it's gonna be this one. Gonna be the empty one there. Uh, before a, a recent update, you actually kind of had to guess which one it was gonna be, um, <laughs> in a way, because uh, it. But before they made an update, both of these were crude oil, and then you had to like remember which one's gonna be water. But luckily, they changed it, so it's always just this one is oil, and then this one's gonna be water. Uh, but keep that in mind. So I'm spacing these out for two reasons. One, because it allows us to easily and nicely power them with a power pole in between. Also. It uh, it allows us to e uh, more easily route pipes um, once we do need to get water in here and once we do get two additional outputs. Having them a space apart, and you will very much see this come into play when we actually route these pipes. Um, this will allow us to route the pipes easily without having an issue of mixing. Um, whereas if I place them directly next to each other, much like I do assemblers, uh, it would it would be a nightmare, really, to be quite honest. So. Obviously, this has no power yet. Probably would like to connect this up. Just run this out here. Need one more, I'd say. This is gonna have to move once we expand our bus, but that's fine there. Uh, and I think maybe to end this out, uh, I just wanna quickly show you, <clears throat> excuse me, losing my voice here. I wanna quickly show you uh, just what I was talking about. So typically what I like to do uh, is have this here. And this is not, this is, you can see it's not really making a solid connection. It's because we don't actually have an output uh, designated here, but it will be fine once we do. I like to do this. So, as you might imagine, you cannot mix fluids in a pipe, much like it's not a great idea, usually, to be mixing fluids in a pipe in real life, uh, unless you're, you know, trying to create a different one or something. Um, you can't, you can't do that here. It won't let you. Uh, it will let us now because there's no output, but once there is an output designated, it won't let us connect these. Like it literally will not let us place a pipe here. And if somehow you get it contaminated, um, once there's actually liquid in these, uh, there will be a little button that'll allow you to flush the system, which is really nice. It's a newer feature. Uh, but anyway, because we can't mix liquids, uh, I like to place my pipes like this. And this is where the extra spacing comes into play uh, because we can take advantage of underground pipes and as you can kind of maybe see developing here, we can 
cross these underneath and have our designated lines because they're different lengths, right? Uh, you, you can't have two underground pipes of different things running in the same plane. So like this is one. Obviously when I try to place another, it's just trying to reconnect this initial one. So that's why we can't have like all three running in the same plane here. They need to be at different heights or, or different planes or however you want to refer to it. Um, now, if these were directly next to each other, these refineries, this would not work because we would not have the space required to do this. So if you can imagine, this one was moved over one. This pipe would actually be where this underground pipe is, which means these two would automatically be trying to connect like this section and this section, and uh, it, it wouldn't let us do that. So we actually then couldn't really output properly without using an underground. Um, because as you can tell, uh, underground pipes don't uh, connect like side by side with uh, above ground pipes. I don't even connect directly with underground pipes in front of them where they go underground. So, uh, you know, obviously they can connect initially, but then where the thing actually goes underground again, um, you, you can't connect above ground pipes to it. Like they will not interfere as you can see. So that's why this system works because the underground pipes are well, going underground and not actually connecting up with these. Um, so this is much what it's going to look like here. And then this will come out. And uh, I like to send this to some sort of storage, uh, which I suppose we could put, maybe put over here. Actually, just bring it out a little ways. And this connects right up easily. You can see the four little outputs, two on the bottom and two on the top, uh, for which we can connect this like so. And now if we had run our oil over this would start working but i think we will do that next episode uh, so these are powered up and ready to go once they get the resource it'll just create petroleum for now and send it into here but we are prepared for the additional two resources and next episode we're going to start that process um, of this and then we're going to work on uh, the next products uh, the intermediates here which are going to be plastic and sulfur and these both just require petroleum gas which of course is what we're making and they do require some water. This one here requires water, and this one actually requires coal. Uh, so we will go into that. There's some other things we can do as well, uh, but we'll get there once we get there. And there we go, guys. I think this was a good start to oil. Hopefully what I said made sense. It was a lot of information, um, so I will try to go over it piecemeal a bit as we just actually walk through the physical steps I was referring to. And hopefully it will kind of all come together for you, uh, but... This is a start to oil. This is where a lot of people get stuck, have issues. So hopefully I can walk you through it. Hopefully this started to make sense. And uh, I think where a lot of people get stuck is the further processes like these. So especially once we can produce two more materials or two more liquids from this. So hopefully we can cover that decently. Uh, as always, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. I hope you did find this helpful and enjoyed. If you did, a like is, a, is appreciated. So other people can hopefully... Uh, come across this and find it helpful as well. And uh, if you are new to the game, uh, I give you a big welcome. I hope you're enjoying it and uh, have, have a great time and are finding this helpful. And if you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe to keep up with all the new content uh, that's coming out here. And uh, as always, I appreciate your thoughts and feedback and stuff down below, uh, you know, suggestions for next episode or anything like that. And I believe that will do it. Until next time, I look forward to seeing you all and do take care.